here with Mark Goodwin, the research coordinator with Wolf Tracks based uh, at Winnipeg, Manitoba. Welcome here, Mark. Thanks. All right, and we're going to talk about micronutrients. Um, maybe let's start off with a quick discussion on maybe the most common micronutrient deficiencies that uh, prairie farmers are dealing with. Well, across the Canadian West, the two most common ones are uh, copper deficiency issues, particularly in uh, most of the cereal and oilseed rotation area of Alberta. Uh, there's also pockets of zinc deficiency here and there uh, throughout the prairies. Um, and typically you'd see that showing up as deficiencies mostly in corn and soybeans. Great. Um, now, for farmers looking at maybe, uh, you know, they suspect a, a shortage of a micronutrient or, or, you know, they're looking to really boost yields and want to make sure everything's in balance. Um, is a soil test really your best option or, or would you do a tissue test in crop? Um, there's really a sort of a three-point plan that most farmers should follow. Uh, point number one is uh, look at your soil test. So make sure that you get a soil test and with most of the micronutrients look for what's called a DTPA extractable level of the micronutrients because that's the closest uh, proxy to what a plant would be finding available in the soil. So soil test look for DTPA extractable micronutrients. Follow up with a tissue test as well because sometimes uh, soil tests can show adequate levels of micronutrients but some of your tissue tests may show that you're marginal in terms of micros particularly uh, on um, higher pH soils. And then the third thing is um, just uh, uh, make sure that you're walking your fields and visually looking for symptoms as well. So if you start finding symptoms where the crop doesn't have quite uh, enough thrift or if it's starting to turn um, like a paler color uh, or you're starting to see leaf striping say on corn in some of the newer leaves, uh, then pay close attention to those areas of the field as well. And so when, uh, when would a farmer be looking at using a tissue test to maybe gauge some of some of their uh, nutrient decisions? Uh, tissue tests vary. You can take them throughout the year. There's different plant parts and different uh, that you would, you would clip in terms of doing your tissue tests depending on the time of year. Um, so it's really dependent on timing and you should uh, consult uh, provincial fact sheet, government fact sheets or extension service fact sheets in terms of what parts to harvest when in order to get an accurate tissue test. Now, when we are talking tissue tests, that would that would often be uh, sort of a, a trying to fix the problem that you're seeing. Um, is there where are we at with foliar application of micronutrients? Um, is the uptake really good to correct a problem like that? I mean, are are we there that that that's a developed technology? Well, as in most problems in life, the sooner you fix the problem, the better off you are. Uh, the longer you leave a nutrient deficiency, whether it's micronutrient or any nutrient, uh, the more you're impacting your yield potential. So um, there are some cases where foliars are uh, a perfectly valid way of going with a nutrient uh, correction. But generally speaking, you should also be watching earlier in the season as well because a lot of your yield potential is set uh, very, very early in the plant life cycle. In fact, a lot of extension services around the world uh, will recommend that you make sure that you are in fact using a soil applied uh, micronutrient in conjunction with sometimes a foliar application. Excellent. Okay, thanks to you so much, Mark. Okay, no problem. <laughs>